have an example of what's called a Fermi problem. And these are named after uh, Italian-American physicist Enrico Fermi, who was uh, famous for, for many things, but amongst those were his ability to pose questions um, and answer them without looking anything up. So just order of magnitude estimates as a way of seeing if something makes sense um, or just to estimate something. So one of the uh, famous examples of this is, uh, since he's at the University of Chicago, how many piano tuners are going to be in the city of Chicago. And you can make order of magnitude estimates, uh, population of Chicago, how many people, uh, what fraction have pianos, uh, how often do those need to be tuned, how often um, or how much time it takes to tune a piano, so therefore how many piano tuners can be employed, and you wind up with a, you know, not bad estimate for how many piano tuners there are. So this particular Fermi problem uh, is uh, how many atoms are going to come off of your tire after you drive for an hour. And it sort of makes the point that these are estimates. I'm never going to count how many atoms come off, and you're not either. Um, but just an order of magnitude estimate of what a reasonable answer is. And our assumptions that we're going to uh, build our answer around that you drive typically about 50 miles per hour, a uh, tire lasts about 50,000 miles, so those are sort of nice round numbers. Um, tires are about 10 pounds, so that works out to be about 4.5 kilograms of tread on them. And um, to simplify our calculation, uh, we assume that those tires are made only of carbon. Okay, so in solving this, um, so the way I chose to do it is we're going to look at driving for an hour that reflects what fraction of the lifetime of a, of a car's tire. So we'll call that fraction F. So driving at 50 miles per hour times a time of one hour. So that gives us a distance and the total uh, distance that a tire can last for. We assumed that was 50,000, so that's 5 times 10 to the fourth mile. And you can see, try to be careful with all our units here. Uh, everything cancels out, and we'll get a dimensionless number. So hour cancels hour. Mile cancels mile, and that fraction is just 10 to the minus 3. So driving for an hour is like a tenth of a percent of the life of a tire. The other thing we need to know is how many atoms are in 4.5 kilograms of a tire, and assuming it's all carbon. So we call N the number of atoms in the tire total. Uh, 4.5 kilograms is going to be 4.5 times 10 to the 3 grams. And one mole of carbon 12 is, by definition, 12 grams. So the number of moles is 375. Multiply that by Avogadro's number. That gives us uh, about 2 times 10 to the 26 atoms total. 
So 2 times 10 to the 26 times 10 to the minus 3. You lose. Um, you will lose approximately 2 times 10 to the 23rd atoms driving for one hour. All right. And again, this is a way to get an estimate. So that um, doesn't seem like uh, all that much of your tire is lost in an hour, but in terms of how many atoms, that is truly an astronomical number of atoms. Um, it's uh, more atoms than there are stars in the observable universe. So in that sense, it is a very, very big number, which is a way of thinking about the fact that atoms are very, very uh, ridiculously small. All right, a little bit extra to add about Fermi problems is that oftentimes uh, students find them frustrating to work through because there's not an exact answer. It's not the sort of thing um, that you have a precise number for. It's just an estimate. Um, the way of the approach of a Fermi problem is going to come up in a physics class is you're going to get an answer for something and it might be something very far out of your experience and you want to be able to make some sort of reasonable estimate, does your answer make sense? And so these sorts of skills of just doing a, a quick order of magnitude calculation might be off by a factor of 10. That could still be enough to give you a sense of reasonableness in a more detailed calculation. Um, so that is an example of a Fermi problem.